Succubus is the edgiest game I've played in recent memory. <laughs> As a spin-off to 2018's Agony, it puts you into the cloven hoofs of a demonic priestess. Out for vengeance after having her wings ripped off like it's the opening to Legacy of Kane's Soul Reaver or something. Featuring intense and brutal action, diversified opponents, a world map, character customization, and a whole heap of other things that are a textbook example of flinging crap at a wall and hoping something sticks. I reviewed Agony a couple of years ago, and I'm not exaggerating when I say that it was honestly one of the worst games that I've ever played. He played as a dude called Nimrod, which I still can't believe is an actual name, condemned to hell after spending a bit too much time in the real world with a bit of a chaotic evil build then forced to wander through hell in search of the Red Goddess, not to be confused with the Green Goddess from Little Britain. Ah, Green Goddess! It was part walking simulator, part stealth game, but mostly just a gruesome and unappealing game with a lot of undercooked mechanics and a plot that wasn't even coherent. But you could also play through it in unique mode as a succubus, and I guess in some capacity, that's what's inspired the developers Madmind Studio to create this new standalone game. And you want to know what's probably the most saddest part about all of this is that these guys have now made two games, while Scorn, another similarly themed game, has spent all this time in development hell. Yeah, literally a layer of hell designated to video games that are never going to get fully completed. And after finishing the whole thing, which took me roughly 10 or so hours, I can honestly say that Succubus is a better game than Agony. That much is for sure. Even though that's kind of like saying it's better to be stabbed than it is shot. What you've got here is a melee combat game with some inconsistent mechanics that also kind of feels really underdeveloped, along with some hilariously bad writing and a story that's harder to follow than a David Lynch film. Come down here and try and pull my mask off. Fellow gentlemen of culture, this is Succubus. You died a little too quick for my taste, buddy. Right, so before I get too far into this video, I do think a bit of praise has to be given to the presentation, and I gotta say that this is a genuinely stunning looking game at times. It's always kind of interesting seeing the way that hell is interpreted in video games, and it's always awesome seeing how different studios bring it to life. The way it's portrayed in something like Doom, for instance, is going to be completely different to how it's shown in the darkness, and Succubus really does bring its own version to the table. And the more you stop to take the time to look off into the distance, the more little things you're going to notice. The lighting is often really good, the other various effects for things like liquid hot magma also kind of looks good. And there is a genuine sense of artistry to the way this whole world's been constructed. Everything always feels like it's been put there for a purpose. It never seemed to feel like copy-pasted assets over and over just to fill the void. At least, when you can see it, I suppose. Yeah, because Succubus does that annoying thing where whenever you get hit by enemy projectiles, the screen starts to look like it's been covered up in a combination of dishwater and douche fluid. And it is in kind of stark contrast to how crappy some of the character models look and the generic enemies you're going to be taking on in this game. Even still though, it's a damn sight better than the modelling in Agony, I mean that's for sure. What is that? Now I said before how this is an edgy game and that's really not an understatement. Seems wherever you're looking, it's common to see people in these various states of torment, whether it be nameless souls kept in cages or faceless figures tied down on torturous racks writhing around in pain and emanating the kind of sound usually reserved to difficult bowel movements. Almost every single NPC in the game either has their boobs or their junk out, often both at the same time, and even our poor succubus can barely find clothes that fit up. I'm surprised you got my measurements right. Whenever you're not in missions, you can chill out back at her cave. You can even customize every little area of the cave itself, from the balcony, the bedroom, right through to the kitchen. Though I don't understand why a demon needs to have a kitchen. I mean, is that where she makes her devil dogs? You can even customize her appearance as well, choosing from various hairstyles and even different horns, along with her entire body shape, replicating the kind of results that'd rival the worst abominations you'd get out of an Elder Scrolls character creator. What the fuck is that? But what is the whole thing about? Well, look, I'm glad you asked, but sadly, I can't really tell you. You're playing as returning champion Vidya, Vidya, I don't know, sounds like an STD, who's a demonic thought that really needs to make an appointment with both a dermatologist and an optometrist as soon as possible. Only because she's got skin that looks like it's had a cheese grater run over it and some pretty bad looking hemorrhaging eyes. Far as I can tell, after betting old mate Nimrod back in agony, she's now seen as some kind of high-ranking demon or something, which brings her to the attention of another demon named Baphomet, who promptly gets to attacking her and setting off to find and kill Nimrod, I think. I'm laughing because I'm picturing using your skull as my toy. 
Now having to work your strength back up again, you've got to cut and carve your way through a series of levels, taking on Baphomet's army, most of whom are just the same few enemies repeated over and over. Interacting with other demons and characters along the way, spouting off the kind of inane dialogue that is so lame that it'd make Duke Nukem cringe. I'll just satisfy myself. Now, I know this stuff was probably written by non-English speaking developers, so it's not fair to make fun of it, but even on a basic level, man, there's just some garbage writing here. And I still can't tell if it's supposed to be tongue-in-cheek and self-aware, or if it's actually taking itself seriously. You dirty, come drowning slut! Like, one of the side modes in this game lets you take selfies, because, I don't know, I guess the cell phone reception in hell must be pretty decent. So, our leading lady is able to take happy snaps with the click of a button. But why this is a mechanic they've included is anyone's guess. Every piece of armor has convenient gaps around the various bodily crevices, and then they outright defy convention at one point, giving you a gown that covers up everything. It does kind of make sense though, when you consider that they also made a Twitter account for this character. Yeah, that's one for the cringe folder. So it just kind of feels like a game with a schizophrenic style. One minute you're stomping demon infants, and then the next one it's an out of place meta joke during a cinematic. It is at heart though a melee combat game, and one that I don't exactly know how to describe either. Guess it's kind of like Dark Messiah of Might and Magic, I guess, with a bit of an emphasis on kicking people around. Yeah, the kick in this game is actually kind of hilarious. And the way that enemies seem to turn into rubber once they catch the bottom of your foot just never stops being hilarious. You can even kick people into Iron Maidens, and I've got to admit that that's pretty cool. Iron Maiden? Excellent! Then I guess the hellish environments are kinda similar to Doom Eternal. There's even the same annoying tentacles coming out of the ground. And again, whoever came up with these kind of things, I hope they get run over by a combine. My issue here is that the combat just ain't very good. I mean, firstly consider this right, it's a melee combat game, but it's one that doesn't even have a block or a parry button. There's a block ability where you can pull out a magic shield, but not a dedicated block button. So your main means to avoid taking damage is by dashing around with the spacebar. And because every single enemy in the game just runs right up to you, and because they also like to do that in high numbers, your spacebar's gonna get an absolute flogging. Weapons in the game are demonic in appearance, and they also function like archetypes. So you've got swords, scythes, hammers, claws, spears, and staffs. Some of which you're gonna unlock automatically, but most of which you're gonna have to pay for, with souls dropped by demon and human enemies. Then aside from just being used as sharp or blunt weapons of mass destruction, each weapon also has an alternate fire mode. Fire mode? Attack mode. The spear, for instance, aside from just being pretty handy to stab things with, can also be thrown by holding down the attack button. The hammer can be used to knock back and stun enemies. And the sword is apparently supposed to be good for crowd control, though this thing's about as effective at beating people back as a fucking pillow is. What is kind of cool too, I think, is how the bow also doubles as a dagger. You press it once to slash or hold it down to fire arrows, and about all I can't understand here is why it's the only weapon where you can't buy a better version of it. But really, that's about it. The combat, regardless of the weapon you're using, pretty much just comes down to pressing the attack button once or holding it down for an alternate attack. Combined with mashing that spacebar button like your goddamn life depends on it, which it really does. Along with kicking people off cliffs or into pits of fire. Showing off the kind of ragdoll physics that makes me nostalgic for the early 2000s. But how they don't have some kind of blocking or parrying system, I mean blocking at least. It just boggles my mind. It boggles my mind. I find it best not to think too long about it. You've also got a bunch of different powers, all of which are limited to whatever armor you're currently wearing. And this is admittedly where it does get kind of interesting. Yeah. And these powers either range from being laughably overpowered to just being completely dreadful. Now look, I'm not going to talk about every single one of them, and if I did, I think we'd all be stuck here until we started to bleed from our assholes. But more than that, I just don't need to list every single one to prove my point here. One of the earliest ones you're going to get is the Fireball, which does absolutely piss weak damage. Then there's a knockback power called Wave Push, which only seems to mildly annoy the enemies, knocking them back a bit. <laughs> Along with the shield, and I know I said before that the game doesn't have a block button, and look, I'm really standing by that, because using this thing takes up the slot for an offensive ability. Plus, you can't use more than one power at a time. After that, you've got the decoy, which actually could have been really useful. Instead, it's not. 
and if the enemies even decide to take any interest in this thing, it just distracts them for all of a couple of seconds, at which point the decoy gets destroyed in a couple of hits. Yeah, thanks. Later on, you'll get Chain Lightning, and this one's just flat out underwhelming. It's a barely noticeable particle effect that bounces between enemies. And I think you'd probably do more damage to the demons here by rubbing your feet on some fuzzy carpet and then zapping them with static electricity. Eventually, you're gonna get a more powerful version of this thing, which can be fired constantly as if you're like Emperor Palpatine. And this is definitely one of the better powers in the game. The next two that I played around with I think were definitely two of the more useful ones. One of them is called Orb of Deceleration, which slows down a single enemy. It's kind of handy against those tankier demons, and it even works against boss fights. Yeah, that's not broken. And I had a really good thing going on there for a bit, using a combination of the flamethrower and a spear. I was able to damage enemies at range for a bit, and then finish them off with the old stabby stabby then you've got what is probably the best power in the game, and that's Flame Wall, where you lay down a line of fire for enemies to stupidly walk right into, which comes from a set of armor that you're given for free roughly two thirds into the game. And this I think is a really good example of one power being a better version of another, because Flame Wall is like a more useful version of another power called Minefield, which ironically is a power that you don't even unlock until you're pretty late into the game. And it's kind of like being given the super shotgun in Doom 2 before you've even found the standard shotgun. Same thing again, kind of going back to those two variations of Chain Lightning. And that's kind of the main issue that I had with this game, is that you're not really getting better at it through learning the ropes. You're only getting better at it because the game gives you these really powerful weapons and abilities. Some of the best armor and weapons in the game are the ones the game gives you, and you don't really earn or unlock them aside from just playing the game in the normal fashion. Compare that to something like the Flame Belch or the Ice Bomb in Doom Eternal, right? People might say, oh, well, that's a cheap way to get all your health or your armor back, but it's still something you've got to coordinate and manage properly. You light an enemy on fire or you freeze them with the press of a button, but you've still got to kill them and maximize the results you get back. I mean, you don't just press a single button to get back these resources. You know what I mean? How about another example? You ever played that indie game called Elderborn? It was a really cool first person melee game made by the guys now working on that upcoming postal game. They're even Polish devs too, just like Mad Mind Studios. Anyway, it was a semi open world game where you had weapons like swords, spears, katars, and hammers. Weapons could be either used to block or parry enemies and would have different attack patterns. Some attacks could be blocked or parried, while others had to be outright avoided. It was a simple system to get the hang of, but pretty complex. And once you unlocked the entire weapon roster and took into consideration the amount of enemy types you're up against, it was a hell of a lot of stuff to contend with. More than that though, the more you played the game, the more you'd learn the timings and recognize the way that enemies would telegraph these attacks. You felt like you were improving as time went on. You didn't just get better because they gave you a weapon that broke the game. You were learning from your mistakes and improving through trial and error. In Succubus though, I just started to play better because the sword or the hammer I was using, or the firewall or the chain lightning seemed to blast through enemies twice as fast. Makes sense? Always trying to sound smarter than you are. I think another thing that really pissed me off here too was that early on there's just so few options for decent crowd control. Knocking back the enemies with the hammer is pretty decent, as is using that wind blast. But there's a fair chunk of the game here where you're gonna just feel overwhelmed. And that annoying habit that the enemies have here to just mindlessly swarm your position makes for this confusing jumble of all of these visual elements on the screen. I mean, just look at this. It's a fucking mess. Yeah. The most effective way you can heal in the game is by drinking these chalices filled with the blood of anime fans, but you only come across these things outside of combat. So the main way is by executing enemies, much like the glory kills in Doom Eternal. Only this thing just refills such a small amount of health, so you gotta spam it like a dozen times to get your health back. And because some of these enemies can do so much damage, it really does feel like you're doing these almost constantly sometimes. So there's not to be around too. I do think Succubus has a bunch of good ideas, but they all just feel so underdeveloped and underrealized, and this execution system is a perfect example of that. On a positive note, I do think the boss fights are unique visually and highly creative, but they're also kind of ruined by that lame bullshit, where the game just keeps spawning in the lesser enemies constantly for the player to deal with. Which, on some level, I guess does make sense, because otherwise, these guys who go down faster than cold milk at a daycare center. They do have some hard-hitting attacks, but most of it just really boils down to how fast you can mash that spacebar. 
And it's also a bit of a shame that they've reused one of the bosses here, not once, not twice, but thrice. Not once, not twice, but thrice. Not a great look. Despite a couple of dozen levels to get through here, there's just no real variety to any of them outside of the presentation. You just go into the next designated combat area, kill the next bunch of unfortunate souls it tries to attack you, and then move on and repeat. Occasionally it turns into gauntlet, and you've got to destroy these piles of bones that keep spawning in your enemies, or you might have to defend statues or pull down switches. Other times it swaps out to a third person view and you've got to climb up rocks and other structures to the button prompts, given the kind of view where you can see what our edgy protagonist is eating for breakfast. But gameplay wise, that's about it. And get used to replaying chunks of the levels over and over here, because this game has an arcade checkpoint system. You'd think they'd put one before a boss fight, for instance? Well, guess what? You'd be mistaken. They're often put 5 or even 10 minutes beforehand for no reason. Optional mission objectives are often included as a means to mix things up even more, but they're really just a matter of killing a certain amount of enemies with a certain weapon, or blowing a certain amount of enemies. Yeah, I guess your mum came up with that one. Or in the edgiest cases, it's something like stomping on a certain amount of demon babies. Maybe I'm getting too old or something, but the whole concept of stomping on toddlers, demonic or not, I just find to be really fucking stupid and kind of try hard. Especially since they still make these very human sounding noises. Look, as a guy who wants to have kids at some point in his life, this kind of thing is just abhorrent. And it brings me back again to just how odd in tone the whole thing is. Doom Eternal I thought was a great example of how you could have a game that was centered around hell and still keep the whole thing tasteful. Succubus though is an example of it being done on the other distasteful end of the spectrum. And none of the messed up stuff you're going to see in this game comes across as being clever. It's often just shocking for the sake of being shocking and it really just does detract from the artistry of all the environments. It'd be like showing off a fancy painting at an art exhibit, and while you're standing there trying to explain the meaning behind the painting, someone's squatting down next to it taking a fat shit. You dirty, come drowning slut! The other dilemma is that you're really playing as a character who isn't very likable. And a demon chick that takes pleasure in hurting other people and not showing remorse for it, well, it ain't exactly the most relatable protagonist. It'd be like a video game where you'd play a Stalin or Genghis Khan. Actually, you know what? A Genghis Khan video game would be kind of dope. <laughs> the fact that I was able to play through this thing from start to finish without wanting to kill myself does speak volumes to its quality, at least in comparison to Agony. And credit where it's due, it is a much better game than Agony was. But like I said before, that's not much of an accomplishment. It's like bragging about beating a one-armed person in a rowing competition. I think writing this thing off as being a dumpster fire really isn't all that fair to be honest, and at the best of times I'd describe it as a serviceable game, but worth checking out, this thing is not. I don't know man, for Mad Mind Studio, maybe third time's the charm. Excellent!